I have with me today a special guest, Colonel Douglas McGregor, to talk about all of the different fires going on around the globe, especially those that affect the United States. Colonel McGregor, thank you for joining me again today. Sure, happy to be here. Wanted to get your thoughts on this because um, I, I have um, people like Gerald Salente from the Trends Journal on and and he says things like, you know, we're already in World War. You think that they just start overnight. No, they slowly build. Um, just this morning, I was reading that Ukraine is telling their citizens, Belarus is about to attack us. Be ready to be attacked by Belarus. They're also saying Hungary and Romania are about to come take back Western Ukraine. And then Finland is telling their people, Russia is about to attack us. And if they do, Belarus will jump in. So, like, there's all these rumors of wars going on. And, it, like, doesn't that just put everyone on pins and needles? And, and that's can, what can really light the fire of a, a, a third world war? Well, first, that's the playbook. If you're a neoconservative and the neocons are driving the train, they're part of the larger globalist elite that wants to transform us into sedated sheep. You know, they, they want to degrade the concept of a human being with a, with a living soul and adopt the atheistic uh, sort of materialistic approach to dealing with people as fung fungible products or commodities, things that are meaningless in and of themselves that can be employed as they see fit. This kind of Trotskyite logic and thinking was the origin behind the common turn. And we've become a kind of 21st century version of the same thing. No, you're absolutely right. We, we, are, we are sowing the, the seeds of discord everywhere we possibly can. Now, can all of these come together and result in a global catastrophe? I suppose it's possible. It's never impossible. But there are a few differences that need to be noted. In 1914, when, you went, when we saw the First World War break out, all of the major participants were already primed for some sort of conflict. They all underestimated its dangers and its destructiveness, but they were all ready to pounce. They were all ready in the launch mode. It didn't take much to cause it. In fact, uh, Gavrilo Princip, the man that killed the Archduke, said after he was captured, even if I had never been there and never shot the Archduke, eventually this war was going to happen. Well, there's some truth to that. But what you have is the slow burn today that takes months and years versus the month or so that elapsed between 28 June and the end of July, 1, 2, 3, 4, August. In other words, everyone did not instantly pull the trigger. It took a succession of events. Well, take that same sort of choreography and apply it to the world today. We're not going to see World War III break out this week or next week. It's going to take a few months. I think by April, May timeframe, all the pieces will be in place. And whoever is not involved in the region or externally will become involved. Remember, Russia is closely aligned with Iran. The Russians are not going to allow Iran to be destroyed. By the way, if Turkey entered this fight, the Russians would not allow Turkey to be destroyed. The, the interesting thing is that Russia and China seem to be very concerned about preserving the international system. We seem hell-bent to destroy it. And yet we're the people that talk about, you know, the rule-based order. What rules? Whatever we say is the rule. Whatever we say, you do. That's all. It's all hypocritical nonsense. It's meaningless nonsense. It's a facade. We're not even enforcing our own laws inside the United States. We're rewarding criminals for their criminal behavior. We're putting policemen in jail. Policemen are afraid to enforce the law. We won't defend our borders. We now have a president who wants to commit federal forces against Texas and anyone else that challenges the right of his party, his administration, the swamp, just put it all together, to open our borders and flood us with millions of people that we did not invite we can't use, we can't assimilate, we can't put to work. And everybody talks about, well, our economy is growing. It's government spending. We are not growing. Our economy is weak. That's the point. 
and our financial position has never been more fragile. And it's only a matter of time until the world holds a fire sale on our treasuries. Look, we are going to take $300 billion in assets that are Russian <clears throat> and illegally seize those and turn those monies or assets over to Ukraine, this criminal regime in Kiev that's our puppet led by Zelensky. Now, let's stop and think about that. If you watch this, if you're India, if you're China, if you're Saudi Arabia, pick your, pick your country, Brazil, uh, Argentina, anywhere, why would you want to hold U.S. treasuries? How do you know the rug's not going to be pulled out from under you the way we are pulling it out from under Russia? They're going to start offloading our treasuries. And remember, most of these were purchased when they were at 0% interest. So these things are of very little value to them anymore. It's a losing proposition. But that cascading effect overseas is also going to be felt here because our banks own the same toxic treasuries that are now have no real value. They are a burden, not an asset, but they can't sell them. What happens to us? We're, we're just walking into a giant bear trap. That's the point. Yeah. Oh, gosh. No, you make a great point. You made, you made me think of something that uh, Stephen R. Covey once said, you know, he he said, oh, you know, G Jesus has this example of you leave the 99 to go after the one. But he said, you can also flip that around. If the 99 see you mistreating the one, they lose trust in the shepherd, right? And so what you're saying is, you know, if, if they see America, United States, steal this money from Russia and then give it away to a corrupt nation, then these other nations go, wait a minute, what if they did this to us? Uh, let, let's get out of their paper. Let's get out of their assets. Um, like you say, that that could create a huge firestorm, uh, you know, financially for us here in here in the United States. Um, final question. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this situation at the border? We have Governor Abbott who's saying, I have the right to defend my state. I have the right to keep my people safe. We are, you know, the, the biggest loading zone for illegal immigrants coming into the country. I'm, I want these other national guards coming in. Let's protect this. And now you have the federal government saying, no, absolutely not. Tear down the barbed wire, let them in, process them faster. Uh, and, and But then at the same time, giving lip service saying, we, need, we might need to close the border. Immigration's out of control. Does, the, does all of the, the positive talking points out of the Biden administration, is that all just to get reelected? Like, what are your thoughts on this situation? Yes, <clears throat> it's meaningless. Okay. Just, just ignore it. Uh, you know, if it were flatulence, it wouldn't stink up a broom closet. Just ignore it. What are we seeing happen? Well, we're seeing something very tragic. National Guardsmen, just like soldiers in the regular army, are all sworn to uphold the Constitution and to protect the American people. And we're actually talking about a situation where conceivably this president could order federal forces to intervene against Guardsmen on the border with Texas in order to open the border to millions more people about whom we know nothing, and many of whom probably present a clear and present danger to our country and to our society. What is wrong? This is, this is not something that the U.S. Army and the National Guard should have to confront. The, these people serve the same flag. You know, it's no surprise that soldiers being interviewed, these are regular Army soldiers at various Army posts, including Fort Hood, which is now Fort Cavazos, are saying, I'm not going to do it. You know, I agree with the National Guard. We should protect the country. Some of them have said, well, I'll, I'll go over to the Guard. Well, that's punishable under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It would be very sad if something like that happened and we were prosecuting soldiers who have sworn to protect the country for, for not committing treason. Because arguably, when you look at what this administration is being done, it looks increasingly a lot like treason. Why would you subject your, your country to this? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you subject your people to this? I was talking to some, some people recently that had lost their jobs. 
you know, it's a bad economy, but in some cases, these people had lost their jobs because their jobs were then had gone to illegals. Well, gee, what a surprise. The illegal will work for less. And then we have to listen to people working for the New York Times or the Washington Post or the Wall Street Journal pour buckets of filth and abuse all over American citizens to say, well, gee, we should be grateful for all these illegals. They're better people. They'll work. Americans won't. Well, Americans want a living wage. Don't they deserve it? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Lots of uh, lots of problems, you know. I uh, I I hope they all work out. The the one that has me nervous, you know, is uh, I mean, I can't imagine being in the military where I go. Okay, wait a minute. I've I've sworn an oath to the Constitution. I love my country. I will give blood for this flag. And then the the you know the the chief commander is saying to go is giving an order that feels like it's against the constitution that it feels like it's against protecting the united states i mean i can't imagine the mental the mental game that is going on in people's minds right now as they are potentially sent against their own brothers and sisters in texas well no i mean that no responsible commander in chief would do that to soldiers and guardsmen it's out of the question that's why I'm saying no soldier or guardsman should ever have to confront this issue. This is something that should have been sorted out a long time ago in Washington, D.C. But unfortunately, the American people are an afterthought. And oh, by the way, we need to bomb Iran. Insane. Makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, people like you and others, uh, you're coming together under our country, our choice to help educate people on values, the constitution, uh, love for the country, love for family and freedom. Uh, is ourcountryourchoice.com the best place for me to, to push some traffic so they can learn Absolutely. about the organization? Well, we're not so much about educating, although hopefully we, we will do some of that. We think large numbers of Americans understand what you and I have been discussing. We want them to join us. We want other like-minded organizations to join us. We will give them room on our platform. We're building a media platform, as well as building the membership in our organization, which we regard as a movement, which we think can become the third way in American politics. In other words, conceivably, over the long term, it can become the foundation for a third party. We badly need an American national party. The Democrats and Republicans don't qualify in that category that's the problem yeah okay well i'll push i'll push uh, people down uh through that link um i appreciate you coming on i know your time is valuable thank you for all of your uh insight all the research you do to keep us up to date on so many different uh, <laughs> so many different battles i mean it, it, it's it's insane the amount of information uh that they're putting out there but thank you and i, I hope you have a great rest of your day 